Um, and this presentation is by group Bite by Bite, and their project is called Apple of the Earth. And we're going to go straight over to Pete. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for giving us the time to let us tell you about our app. So we are team Bite by Bite, and we're made up of Chris, Jack, James, and myself. So in initial discussions, we became aware of the challenges and problems of many of the current lifestyle and dieting apps. Many of these focus on complex FAS buzzwords, such as macros, micros, paleo, keto, who knows, and there tends to be a lot of focus on the negatives, such as calorie counting, restricting what you can and carrot eat, and even when you can eat it. This is great for some people, but we wanted to create a lifestyle mobile app that was far more inclusive and only pairs about the positive stuff that you are putting into your body, promoting fruit and veg diversity in your weekly diet. So with a type, a swipe, or using photograph recognition, our app, Apple of the Earth, tracks how many unique fruit and veg you have consumed each week, encouraging you to reach 30 different variants. So now over to Jack, who's gonna show you a little bit about our app. A major feature of our app uses image recognition. We're using AWS recognition, which is Amazon's image recognition AI, to identify objects in photographs that the user takes. Our app intelligently filters the results to only show fruits and veg that can be found in our database. This filtering also allows us to inform the user if they have already consumed the item in the current week. Next slide, please. So this is our app, Apple of the Earth. When the user launches the app, they're greeted by a login page. If the user tries to log in with an empty or invalid input, they are given a prompt. Once the user is logged in, they are brought to the home page, where they are welcomed back and shown their current progress for the current week. They can scroll through fruit and veg on the carousel and swipe away items that they have eaten to add them to their total. They can also dynamically search through the results for a quicker way to find items. If the user wishes to undo their last swipe, they can use the undo button to remove the last item from their consume list and repopulate the carousel. The camera button opens the image recognition section of the app. From here, the user only needs to take a picture of their fruit or veg to be given the option to add it to their eaten list. They will then be prompted to return to the home screen. At the bottom of the page is a recipes section. This takes the user to a list of suggested recipes where they can scroll through for any and select any for more information. From a single recipe, the user can return to the home page by pressing the app icon. Now back to Pete to talk through our front end tech choices. So the framework we were going to be using was a, a huge decision, and we spent a lot of time spiking alternatives such as Svelte and Vue. And although these were fantastic, we opted for React Native uh, due to the well-documented and efficient integration with the other dimensions of our tech stack. And also it is platform agnostic, which means it allows us to develop and test on both Android and iOS. So Axios was a perfect partner to make network requests from our front to back end and left the door open for scalability with either relational or non-relational databases. And because we were really, really keen to make this a, a working mobile app, it was extremely important to us that we tested this on our mobile devices throughout the process. So Expo was absolutely, Expo was absolutely brilliant because it allowed us real-time testing as we changed the code. And now handing over to James, who's just going to tell us a little bit more about the back end. Thanks, Pete. So the back end of our application was built using MongoDB, Node.js, and Express. We chose to use a non-relational database. We felt it was the best fit for our data structure. We were able to create collections to store our users, could then store the user's food and the object themselves. This was the alternative to create injunction tables, which while a great method of establishing relationships, we wanted something we could scale quickly just based on the limited time we had. This also meant that things like dietary requirements, allergy information, any recipes they had liked, stored photos, could easily be stored further down the line without the need for any extra columns and tables. I think we all enjoyed learning about a different type of database after learning a lot on the course about relational and SQL databases. We used MongoDB Atlas Cloud Management 
to host our database and this proved very useful in referencing our data as well as providing a really clear visual representation of our data, especially as it grew. We used Mongo clients to establish our connection, which was well documented for use with Jest. This meant we could individually test endpoints and by using schemas, we could set up constraints for the items in our collections. This ultimately meant we could handle errors more appropriately and test all error handling and endpoints. We used Express as our server. I know it's been mentioned a lot today. It uses middleware to handle the requests and responses really well and does make the process of developing RESTful APIs a lot smoother. And finally, the credentials and server for communicating with Amazon's recognition API were also kept in the back end of our application, which received the photograph encoded into Base64 and sent the request to Amazon's recognition API, which in turn returned our results to be sent to the front end. I'd now like to hand over to Chris, who's going to talk through some of the challenges we overcame when building the application. Next slide, please. Thanks. So we did face a few challenges along the way. Actually, these ended up being really excellent opportunities for us all to band together and come up with some really good solutions. A few of these are listed on the slides now. The first is image recognition. For us, getting the Im image recognition working was a key feature of the app, and it's one we really wanted to showcase. At the start of the project, it was a bit of an unknown. None of us had worked with this kind of feature before. And so it's a key technology for us to spike and test for limitations of. During the spike, we were able to produce working code in the node environment. So that was brilliant. We thought we had it all solved by that point and we left the uh, spiking process there. However, the transition of splitting that functionality across front and back end turned out to be actually quite a tricky process. And it's something we didn't fully appreciate at the start. So we had a few issues along the path of this and we could go into more detail about that. But in summary, we, we found solutions to each of these as they arose and we were able to realize the finished product. Before moving into developing the app, we identified key risks for the project and dedicated time to spiking these. Um, this included the image recognition, but also just deciding on the best tech stacks for the job. This process helped us assess our options and come to a decision early in the design stage. And this leads on to the final point here about decision making. Uh, the more we looked into the, the app, the more ideas we came up with and more excited we got about it. So the scope of the project is limited though, only two weeks. So we had to be quite strict with ourselves. We followed agile working methodologies and this helped ensure we were tackling the right problems at the right time and we were communicating as effectively as possible. And well, the future roadmap. There are loads of additional features we'd love to add to this. Um, top of the list is logging multiple ingredients via image recognition. The underlying tech is capable of handling multiple items and to fully implement this feature, it requires some more tweaking on the front end just to make sure that the user gets the most useful data presented to them. Um, the image on the slide shows this. Well, it's a pretty random spread of ingredients there, but it, it's a demonstration of the app correctly handling multiple ingredients. Uh, the next item would be tailoring recipes. Uh, the recipe API we used has loads and loads of recipes on it. And then we're collecting lots of details about the user. So really combining these two sources of information provides some really useful outputs. And finally, um, we wanted to dive deeper into the stats of the user. So again, we're collecting lots of data about the user and, and their habits. So being able to show this against the seasonality of the ingredients, the popularity of the ingredients would be a really cool feature. So I'd like to hand over to James now to summarize the project. Thanks, Chris. Next slide, please. So the fruits of our labor or what we've learned. Um, a solid MVP to work towards is valuable reference points. So this made sure that we were all on the same page, we had the same vision for the app and that that stayed consistent across all team members. The importance of identifying data structures so thinking about the needs of the application, understanding how data would flow in our application meant we could identify which components we needed and, and where and proved really useful when converting our user stories into functional aspects of the application. Implementing effective version control is crucial when working as a team. So staying informed on which components people are working on and where we're up to in development is proved very useful and especially when we had to do any big mergers or resolve any conflicts in our code. The benefits of agile working practices, so stand-ups and Kanban board are a really good way of not only reflecting on our own work as individuals and our contributions, but also identifying the way forward and genuinely stay motivated as a team. I know we enjoyed our morning stand-ups. And last but certainly not least, I learned personally that apple of the earth is the literal English translation of the French word for potato, which 
might be as useful as the other things I've learned one day. And finally, I'd like to thank you all for your time and viewing our presentation and we're welcome any questions that you may have about our application.